Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on, partner. Where do you think you're going? Um, getting on the bus. I got my ticket right here. Look, buddy. There used to be a time where the boarding pass was enough. But you need your immunity passport now. So, cough it up. Immunity passport? What the f***? Now, let's talk about immunity passports and the perils of conferring coronavirus status. This, this comes from The New Yorker. And this was back in May 22nd. Imagine how much worse it is now. Wait till you guys see this right here. This was brought to me by, brought to my attention by Ryan over at The Last American Vagabond. I was not aware of this until I saw this on his live stream. And I wanted to cover it real quick because this is serious, serious garbage. We're talking about your entire way of life changing because of the edicts of narcissistic psychopaths. Your entire way of life, the entire way of life for everybody that you love, everything that you hold dear. Our lives are about to be flushed down the toilet if we let it happen. So the New Yorker says, in January, a Swedish, let me make sure this is, you can see this. A Swedish entrepreneur named Joachim Holton co-founded Sidehide, a new digital app intended to streamline hotel reservations. That sounds innocuous, doesn't it? No harm there. Streamline hotel reservations. Weeks later, some of the first confirmed cases of COVID-19 were reported in Europe. Just weeks later? Gosh, that sure is, that's just a coincidence, guys. It's just a coincidence. Watch how they're going to use this app. Almost instantly, Holton told me demand stopped. Before the pandemic, let's just call it what it is because James Bullard did, organized plan partial shutdown of the U.S. economy in the second quarter. It's a pandemic. That's his words, not mine, YouTube and DLive. Sidehide was working with a London-based company called Ofeet Onfido, which uses artificial intelligence, keep that in mind, artificial intelligence and facial recognition to verify identities. Hey, you show me your papers. It's no longer show me your papers. It's like, I already, I already have your papers. If I have your face and we have the artificial intelligence, we have all the information on you that we need and we're collecting it at a breakneck speed through artificial intelligence. Halton learned that Onfido had created a way for users to upload a serology test to a private server and use facial biometric data to unlock the data and display the results. Huh, we, that's a big jump from streamlining, streamlining hotel reservations. He asked the company to build that capacity into his app. Hmm, why? In June, Sidehide will launch again in a few Miami hotels, having added what is being called an immunity passport. Think uh, vaccination certification uh, a la Gil Bates and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and the Rockefeller Foundation and Gavi and ID2020 and all of them being intertwined because they want your data. They want you, they want your data collected. Patrons who've been tested for COVID-19 antibodies are shown to have them have them and will have that information embedded on a QR code to be scanned by hotel staff upon arrival. The Miami launch is a test, a proof of concept, and if it works, Halton is hopeful that it will help revive the travel industry. The idea, Halton said, is to let the hotel staff know the guest is safe. It, sound, it sounds so good, doesn't it? We just want people to be safe. We have good intentions. But as Daniel Webster said, good intentions will always be pleaded for what? Every assumption of authority. Webster also said, it's hardly too strong to say that the Constitution was made to guard the people against the dangers of good intentions. There are men in all ages who mean to govern well, but they mean to govern. They promise to be good masters, but they mean to be your masters. Keeping the guests safe. That's what it's all about, right? Nope. It's not about keeping you safe, guys. It's about keeping you controlled. This is a control mechanism. Immunity passports. In April, Umfido raised $100 million in venture capital. Where do you think that? It is not easy to raise a million dollars, let alone a hundred million dollars. They raised a hundred million dollars in venture capital. And I have not looked into this but I bet you anything, how much do you want to bet that the Gill and Melinda Bates Foundation and the Rockefeller Foundation had something to do with this? In a press release announcing the deal, Onfido's attorneys noted that the pandemic presented the company with an opportunity. 
<laughs> and it's just weeks later too, guys. It's just coincidence. Go back to sleep. That's all it is, is coincidence. Onfito's attorney noted, attorneys noted that the pandemic presented the company with an opportunity. And what did Ron Manuel say? And this is an opportunity to work on a new set of use cases, which range from virtual voting and passport visa applications through to secure ways of carrying out contact tracing to track the spread of a virus without compromising user privacy. They're not tracking the spread of a virus, guys. It's not about tracking the spread of a virus. It's about tracking you, keeping track of you, contact tracing you. And forget about this contact tracing. They're not contact tracers. They're constitution tra tramplers. This is rights thrown out the window for safety and security. Hey, and if you give away a this little bit of, of essential liberty for some politically promised security, you deserve neither liberty nor security. I'm going to read that one more time. Onfito's attorneys noted that the pandemic presented the company with the opportunity. What did Ron Manuel say? Hey, never let a good crisis go to waste because it gives you an opportunity to do things you otherwise couldn't have done unless there was this crisis, which drives people your way because it's the Hegelian dialectic. Problem, reaction, solution. They create the problem, wait for the fear-based reaction, and then push on you the pre-planned solution. And that's what this is. They already had it waiting in the wings. You, think, you really think it was for... Hotel reservations, streamlining, streamlining hotel reservations. Gosh, it sure doesn't look like it to me. Noted that the pandemic presented the company with the opportunity to work on a new set of use cases, which range from virtual voting and passport visa applications through to secure ways of carrying out contact tracing to track the spread of a virus. Yeah, right. Like the war on drugs is a war on drugs. No, it's a war on people. War on terror. No, it's not a war on terror. It's a war on people. It's a war on you. They're not coming out against terrorists. They're coming out against you. That's why they developed the Department of Homeland Security. That's why they came out with the radiation and molestation practices of the TSA at every airport in the United States since 2001. Keeping track of you. It's not about controlling terrorists. It's about controlling people, what they would call the citizenry. Through the secure ways of carrying out, see, without compromising users, this is such a, such a smokescreen. Without compromising user privacy, it's all about getting up in your privacy. Recently, Unfido submitted a proposal to members of the UK's Parliament Science and Technology Committee as they consider ways to lift stay-at-home orders, including the development of immunity passports. There, there's your leverage right there. What is that? Uh, what do they call that? Tit for tat. What is that? Uh, Quid pro quo. If you want us to lift the stay-at-home orders, then you have to uh, don the immunity passport. You have to have the immunity passport or the QR code on your phone. This for that. Your freedoms for you take our immunity passport. The MPs are following the lead of the Chilean government, which is issuing documents that allow, look at this, this is a control word, man, allow anyone who has recovered from COVID-19 to go back to work and move freely during quarantine. It's not quarantine. Look at all the euphemisms they're using. It's not quarantine. It's house arrest. The MPs are following the lead of the Chilean government, which is issuing documents that allow, oh, thanks for your permission, daddy government, anyone who has recovered from COVID-19 to go back to work. Oh, so you mean you could disallow, you could not allow us to go back to work if we haven't checked out with your little QR code and your um, immunity passport. Onfido has not worked on that program after pushback from members of the Chilean medical community and from infectious disease specialists around the world who say it's too early uh, to know if people who have had the virus are immune to reinfection or incapable of spreading the disease. The government started calling the document release certificates rather than immunity passports. So, th so they just buried a euphemism inside of another euphemism. It's still about controlling. It's still about your, this is big government per permission slip. You can call it an immunity passport. You can call it a release certificate. You can call it a vaccination certification. This is a, this is a permission slip from the government for you to travel. It's a permission slip for the, from the government for you to take the metro or do you, for you to hop on that plane or for you to hop on that train. Or it's an immunity passport before you can enter that grocery store. You already got to have masks all across the nation. You got to have masks before you go into Walmart, Lowe's, Home Depot, my local grocery store is going to start it on the 27th of this month. You can't come into the store unless you have a mask on. How much of a jump do you think that's going to be with, okay, we're going to go from masks to immunity passport. Here, pull out your phone right here. Let's see your QR code. 
Let's see if you have permission to come and shop for groceries today, young man. And then there's an expiration date on this too. Either way, they confer the same benefits. On Fido CEO, this guy right here told me, as a society, is it acceptable for people who have had the virus and recovered to signal that or not? It's a good question, but not one for us to answer. Well, you've already answered it by creating this, this app that's going to keep you from doing the things that you normally would have done without permission. It's kind of like hunting and fishing. You don't need a hunting and fishing license. You have a right as a natural human being to go to that lake or that stream or that river or that ocean and go fishing or to go to that field and go hunting. A government a license is nothing more, nothing less than the government's permission slip. They're actually taking a right away from you and then selling it back to you, you know, $20 a year, $50, $100, whatever it is. They're selling back to you a right and giving you a permission slip and saying, okay, now you can do what you otherwise would have been able to do even without us. But now because you believe in the thing called government, you're submitting to that. We can't submit to this, guys. You know, there are a lot of people that can't, their, their uh, systems cannot tolerate being masked. There are a lot of people who have asthma. There are a lot of people who, you know, you may be healthy and you may be able to tolerate the onslaught that happens to your body when you reduce your oxygen and increase the CO2 circulation in your veins and then release the, the cortisol because now it's a stressor. You got, you're in flight or fight now. It's like, wait, why, why did your body sitting there going, why, did, why are you limiting your oxygen? Why are you limiting the fuel that keeps us going? Why are you increasing the CO2? Why do I have to pump all this cortisol into your veins? Because, I mean, aren't you, aren't you ready to fight or flight? What's going on? Your body's all, all confused. And now your immune system is like, hey, where's all, where, where's all, my, where's all the sensory information where I can collect data and, and, and boost your immune system and strengthen you? One doctor pointed out like this, the, one of the reasons they believe that kids, little kids crawl around on the floor before they start walking and put stuff in their mouths is that they're trying to acclimate their immune system to a whole bunch of germs. You know how many germs are on a, on a, on a Lego sitting on the floor? There's probably fecal matter and all that kind of stuff on that. And yet kids don't get sick. Their immune systems are getting boosted. If you live on a farm, your immune system is like, it's on steroids, man. But you start washing your hands 20, 30, 40, 50 times a day, you're constant, constantly wearing a mask. You're not around anybody. You're social distancing. You, you've basically isolated yourself. Um, there, I saw this report yesterday where these, these kids that are allowed to go back to school, like a room full of 30 people, they'll only have five kids going in there, and they're all scattered throughout the room, and they get these shower curtains. They're basically, they become the boy in the bubble. We've become the boy in the bubble. And our immune systems are getting thrashed and trashed. So now when the slightest little bug comes along, these people are not going to have a, an immune system that's built up. Everything that the government is telling us to do and has told us to do for the last couple of decades, think about the food pyramid, think about them, them uh, hailing how great cigarettes are. I, nine out of 10 doctors um, say you should smoke menthols. 20, 30 years later, they find out, oh my gosh, all these people are dropping dead of the, you know, because they did the very things that we told them to do. The food pyramid was completely stood on its head. They had everything completely in the wrong order. And now they're telling you, you need to wear a Petri dish on your face 24 hours a day, seven days a week, <laughs> you know, in some places. You step out of your house, you have to put a diaper on your face. That's that moist atmosphere that traps all that, the, the junk that otherwise would not have been there. Amazing, man. Okay, before you go anywhere, a lot of people have asked me if they can get a shirt from the store with the design on the back. Let me show you real quick what you can do within the store as far as self-editing your own design that you can put on any shirt, hoodie, mug, phone case, whatever. Pick out any design from the store, then select any item. And guys, there are hundreds of items to choose from. Hats, beanies, bags, buttons, men's items, women's items, stuff for kids, and even pets. I'll just select this shirt right here. You can change the item color to whatever you want. Hit this little pencil editing tool right here and then click on customize. You can enlarge, shrink, or reposition the design on any item. You can also click over here to the left on designs and add any design you want. Matter of fact, you can put as many designs as you want on the front or on the back of the shirt. Or you can click on text and add some customized lettering. 
With the lettering, you can change the font, change the font color, increase the size, and you can even bend the text. And check this out. If you want a design or lettering on the back or on the sides, just click on where you want your design or text, click on the design or text tool, or you can even upload your own design. It only increases the price of the item a couple bucks. And you can do this on any item that you select. The store link is in the description and in the pinned comment. Your purchase gets you a kick-ass design and supports the channel while it helps me create more content. Leave your thoughts about this video for the world and the Google Thought Police in the comments section below.